This is going to be a quick overview of how to get started with live binders. First, I'd like to just show you an existing binder. We'll go to Joy's Genius Hour binder. This is a great binder. So a binder has tabs and then underneath it has sub tabs and each tab or sub tab can be a link and you'll see that the link is live here inside the binder. It can also be a file that you've uploaded. It can also be a video or other rich multimedia that you've embedded inside the binder. So that's an existing binder. So let's start our own binder. We'll click on start a blank binder. And you might want to add a description or tags that'll help you or other people find it later. And then you select a category. Most of our binders on live binders are in the education category. And you decide if you want it public or private. If it's public, everybody can see it. If it's private, only you and the people that you choose can see it. You can add an access key to give individuals access to your binder. You can also change this later. So if you want to start with a private binder and make it public later, that works fine. You can use a Google search to fill a binder. We're not going to do this today, but you, if you are starting a research project, you may want to do this. It just gives you the first 10 tabs from a Google search, and that's a nice way to get started. So we're going to click on Create a Binder. And you'll see I have some blank tabs here. The easiest way to add content is just to type a URL. Now the fastest way to add content to your binder while you're browsing is by installing LiveBinder. It's a little bookmarklet that you install on your browser toolbar and it allows you to add a website as you're browsing. For example, if I wanted to add this website to my binder, I would click on LiveBinder it. And this menu would pop up. I could select the binder that I want to add it to and click on Add to Binder. I can put that in a tab or sub tab if I want. Then when I go back to my binder, I see that that website has been added to my binder. Now if I want to add a new tab, I just click on Add Tab. If I want to add a sub tab underneath, I click on Add Sub Tab. You'll see that there is a tab menu here. This is a little quick menu that lets you add tabs, copy tabs, clear the tab contents or delete the tab and move the tabs right to left. You can also set the tab color from here. Now if I wanted to add other content, I would click on add content. And from here I can upload a file and I would just choose a file from my local disk and upload it. PDFs work really well for this. JPEGs work well. Microsoft Word documents or Microsoft Excel documents can be uploaded, but they will be uploaded as a link. And when somebody clicks on it, it will download to their local site. And that's because those documents can't be viewed inside a browser. So it's often best to just output those to PDFs if you're going to upload them. There's also a way to add other content. You can search Flickr, YouTube, you can add a QR code, you can add embed codes from somebody like Prezi or SlideShare or YouTube. You can add from your Dropbox or your Delicious account, and you can also add content that you've already used in your other binders. You can also select text layout from here. So you can add text as well as content to your binder. And you can select from a number of text layouts. We also have tab settings. And here's where you can set a tab color for your binder. You can set a default tab color. That'll, that will color all your tabs. Or you can just color an individual tab.
We also have binder settings, and here's where you can change all the information about your binder itself. You can change the binder name, the category, the access that we talked about before. You can add or remove collaborators if they have a live binders account. And you can have the t arrange the tabs so that they're on the side or on the top. You can set the background color for your binder. And you can select a binder cover. And a binder cover can be a file that you've uploaded or it can be a Flickr image or a YouTube video that you find. We'll do a Flickr image. And there's my new binder cover. One more quick thing that I want to show you is the share links. You can pin your binder, you can add it to Google+, email, tweet it, put it on Facebook, or just grab the link to send to somebody. And this is the link to your binder. There's lots more options for linking and embedding your binder. You could put a binder icon on your web page, or even embed an open binder on your web page. You can also link to a specific tab. If you want to send somebody to a specific tab, you can just click on that tab and then click on the share link and you can grab that link that will send them directly to that tab from here. So that is a very quick overview on how to get started with live binders.